Make sure you have your pens and notebooks out on this one because this episode is filled with gold. Beth Weisenberger is the co-founder of Handel Group, a 17 plus year executive coach back when it was like totally unheard of and not cool, and who has taught thousands of clients to human better, as she says. Beth is the one who some of the world's top CEOs, venture capitalists, and gurus go to Beth, from Live Nation's Michael Rapino to Gary Vaynerchuk, to NFL players Justin Pugh, Nolan Carroll, and even to singer Michelle Williams, just to name drop a few for you guys. Beth founded Handel Group with her sister Lauren 15 years ago, and it has developed into a multi-platform business with corporate life coaching, education, sports, and product divisions. The Handel Method is a unique, cutting edge, straightforward, and brutally honest methodology that has been taught and developed at over 50 universities and institutes of learning worldwide, from MIT to Stanford University of Business, to Yale, to Columbia, to NYU, and the New York public school system. Best coaching style is amazing. You guys are gonna fall in love with her today. She is so funny. She's super straightforward, blunt, honest, bold. She's got that New York edge to her. And she's got some mad skills, an awesome toolkit, and some incredible amounts of wisdom that she's laying down in today's episode. And I am so excited for you to hear it. So without further ado, let's dive in. I am so excited right now, guys, because I have a legend with us today. Beth, I have heard so many amazing things about you, Beth. I've already told you some of which like I, this woman is a powerhouse to say the least. Like she's created so much success in her life and she's actually the coach to my best friend, Julie Surratt. And so she has just raved about you. So I am so excited to pick your brain for everyone to hear from you, to experience your, not just your wisdom, but your fire. Cause I know you bring the heat. <laughs> yes. Female on fire. That is exactly. You are definitely a female on fire. So this is going to be, I know, a, I know I it's going to be a spicy I, episode. I scare some men away. It's true. <laughs> In the best ways. In the exactly. Best ways. The ones that shouldn't come near me. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, totally, totally. They can't handle you. They can't handle the heat. You know, you got to find someone who can handle the heat. Exactly. <laughs> that is true. So the topic today that I'm really excited to dive into with you, Beth, uh, that I know our listeners, the women listening right now are going to really benefit from. One of the big questions I get all the time is like, okay, I know I meant for more. I have, I like, I know that there's something I want to do with, you know, there's, there's these things, these goals I have, but I had this struggle with being accountable to myself and to what I want to do. And so this is like a big, a big topic, especially for, I would say my listeners. And so I'm really excited for them to hear from you about this whole concept of integrity, yeah. accountability, yeah. and that really, really creating the results that, that yeah. you desire. So I'm going to let you go ahead and speak into integrity as well, because I know you have like a powerful uh, sure. definition that you use for integrity. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hi, everybody. Such a pleasure to be here with female on fire founder, Ashley. So I'm all excited to help everyone. So here's um, integrity, two definitions. The first one is the ability to keep a promise to yourself. Mm. <laughs> and we suck at that. If you just take a look as you're listening, like you I would imagine you keep promises to the people you work for, or you would get fired, right? I would imagine you keep promises to your family, for those of you who have children, for the most part to your children. But when it comes to you at the end of the day, when you're supposed to now exercise or meditate or journal or you know read the hour you promised to read to learn more about your industry, you will at the end of the day go, yeah, no. You'll do everything for the children. You'll do everything for your friends, everything for work. But you yeah, yeah. So our ability to keep a promise to ourselves, we, we suck at that. So we teach that. That's number one. Number two, it goes a little deeper. The integrity is living true to your values. So if I have a value of being a great girlfriend when I'm in a relationship, then my being a bitch has no integrity 
So this is where it goes deeper to your characteristics, your values, how mm. you treat people, right? And you walk your talk. Like I have a daughter who's 19 years, 19 and a half years old, Max, right? And we went out to dinner the other night. And, and my value is to be an awesome mother. And any time that I'm not, I have to deal with that because that would be an integrity issue. Mm -hmm. So I turn anything that's inconsistent with my values into an integrity issue. Why? Because then I'm going to teach you how to handle any integrity issue on a dime. It's not that hard. But the first thing you have to get is where is your integrity out? That does not mean you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. That does not mean you're a failure. Notice I have to say that because we'll go into, oh God, I have no integrity. Do not go all dramatic on it. It's very simple. You're eating cake when you shouldn't be eating cake. You're 20 pounds overweight since COVID. You keep saying you're going to meditate and you keep not meditating. You keep saying you're going to sex your man three times a week. And if we get one, we're lucky, right? You keep saying you're going to be so loving to your person and you're a bitch. Okay, all those, that doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means, oh, you're not living true to your values. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing, Ashley, is that's integrity. Yeah. And, and that right there is takes a lot of willingness and courage to be able to look at that because a lot of us don't even want to admit it. Yeah. We don't even no, want to, you know what I mean? We don't even want to admit it. We're like, I'm, no, I'm fine. Yeah. Okay. But, <laughs> your results. but that's the thing. So I want to underline that actually, because mm -hmm. it's so good. People who end up getting coached in Handel group, including all the corporations, because I'm, uh, I'm an executive life coach is you have to have the courage yeah, to go to work on yourself, to tell the truth, to admit it, you know, especially when you get into the dark side of ourselves, right? Because you could say we have our higher state and our lower state, our dark side and our light side, right? That doesn't, everyone's got one, yep. right? And the willingness to go to work on it frees you up from it, but you got to tell the truth that you got it. Mm -hmm. Right. Like when I had to admit I was a bitch and mean to my daughter, to my husband at the time, I remember like, no, I threw a <laughs> glass of wine on my sister. We were in a restaurant. She's about to train me because she invented the Handel method. That's our maiden name. And she's about to train me. This is 18 years ago. We're at a dinner on the Upper West Side. And she goes, all right, the first thing I want to teach you is about our dark traits. And I want you to know you're mean like our mother. And I'm like. What are you talking about? I am not mean. I'm 45 years old and I have no clue I'm mean. I'm not mean. Yeah, you are. And she goes like right into it. And I take my Chardonnay and I throw it on her, not <clears throat> even realizing Ashley I'm mean. I then walk out the restaurant. I'm on the Upper West Side of New York City. I walk a half a block and I'm like, okay, maybe I'm a little mean. Like literally did not even fathom that throwing the glass of wine on her was me. Like that's how out of it I was. I walked back in the restaurant. Thank God my sister was laughing. So the waiter and her, they're wiping the wine, you know, and then she looks at me and she goes like this, <laughs> just like that. And I sit down, I'm like, all right, I might be a little mean. Oh. That was at 45 years old. I was finally willing to admit, yeah, I'm a bitch, but after I admitted it, that next day I saw her at the gym and I'm now crying. I can't believe how mean I am. And she's like, Beth, what are you crying? This is the greatest thing in the world because now that you know you're mean, we can fix it. And I'm like, oh. And my bitch, very rare that it comes out now. It's like an exception. I got that thing mm -hmm. so tight on a leash now because it's got no integrity. Who wants to be a bitch to the people in their lives? Mm-hmm. Oh, I love, I love that story, by the way. That's amazing. I love your sister. What an amazing sister. I love that she was laughing and clapping. I love that she was celebrating <laughs> your realization because it's so true. We can't transform or fix something if we don't even acknowledge it exists in the first place. Right. So excited for you. And that's so, that's so beautiful. Um, okay. So I, I really want to, um, and I want to say, yes, like I know like it's life is an awareness game. Yeah. And you've got to be willing to be aware. And yes, it takes courage. And, um, and I definitely, for me, like I have a self, I get self-righteous. Like that's one of my things, right? I got like, and I remember the first time, like you, I was told that I was self-righteous and I was like, of course, no, 
I am no such thing, right? Like, it's so offensive. As you're being self-righteous, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, but that that's the, that's the part of it, right? If we get triggered in the moment that we are given feedback about a part of ourselves, if we feel it like, oh, like it really gets our goat, that's the moment where we know, wait a second, there, there might be some truth here. Because if yeah. it wasn't true, if it, if it really wasn't true, like if deep down we didn't actually think that could be true, it wouldn't yeah. even it would like drip off our back like water. Exactly. Exactly. We only react violently when it's so true, which yes. then makes it so funny. It's like with my daughter, she used to lie all the time. And I'm like, Max, you lied. And then she'd huff off, slam the door and be offended that I didn't trust her. And I would just giggle going, okay, you just proved that I caught yeah. you in a lie. <laughs> yeah. Totally. It's like there, when there's nothing to defend, we don't defend. When it's truth, you don't need to defend. So good. So good. Okay. So I really want to dive into um, yeah. that. Okay. So that, that accountability piece, there's something that you said, you, you said a few times you were like, yeah, and we suck at that. And we suck yeah. at that. Why yeah. is it? Why do we suck at that, Beth? Okay. So let's discuss Dr. David Hawkins years ago, years and years and years ago, did a study of human being and what he discovered. Everyone listen very carefully. Two numbers that 80% of a human being's inner dialogue is negative, wait. And 95% of the 80% that's negative that's talking to us is the same shit you thought yesterday. So I'm 62 years old, right? So I'll look in the mirrors, I'm getting dressed in the morning and I'm like, oh God, she's falling down, right? That's the thought I've been having since I've been 60 years old, right? It's not anything new, same negative thoughts. So. Mm -hmm. Given that your thoughts give you your actions and then give you your results, we better impact who's talking to us. So I'm going to introduce you to the 80% inner dialogue that gives you your actions, gives you your results. So you can impact your results. You've got to impact not your actions first. You must impact who's talking to you. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to introduce you. What Handel did is we named the three voices. The I'm really excited for this, by the way, guys. Here it comes. <laughs> I'm going to name the voices and then I'm going to explain them to you. Yes. Okay, here we go. The first voice, not in any order, but the first one I'm saying is the chicken voice. The chicken voice is your voice that is the avoider. You're avoiding confrontation. You're avoiding giving bad news. You're avoiding anything that gets you fear-based, you know, scared. Like. And here's what it'll sound like. It does not sound like a chicken. It sounds like this. Ooh, I should go talk to Ashley today about that course we're putting on. She's going to be mad at me. I don't have enough in there and I haven't done anything. You know what? Mm, let me, maybe it's Tuesday. Let me wait till Friday because she's always way better before the weekend. So I'll talk to her on Friday and let her know that I'm failing. She, the person who did that, will think that's the greatest business strategy of their life. They will not go, I'm a chicken. No, they'll just think that's a great business strategy and move on to the next and will not tell mm. you that they're failing in their accountability. That's the chicken. Mm. Then you've got, ready? The brat voice. The brat. The brat is the defiant voice. That is like my 19, year and a half, 19 and a half year old daughter who goes like this, I don't want to, you can't make me, you're not the boss of me, drop dead, screw you, leave me alone, and you should die by the way too. <laughs> so that's the defiant one. That's the one that goes like this. At the end of the day, you know, you are out to lose your 20 pounds from COVID. And you have, you have told yourself you're not eating that fried food. And at the end of the day, you've had a really stressful day. <laughs> it's been so hot. And you're like, I'm going to have some fried food. Yeah, no one will know. It's good. I need it. I've been stressed. And you'll go have the fried food with not a second thought. And I thing. deserve it. I just, exactly. Yeah. I deserve it. And we'll have nothing about it that, you know, uh, also known as no integrity. All right. Now, the third voice is the most subtlest of the three, just as deadly. It is the weather reporter voice. So I am sitting in Westchester and it is partly sunny and 73 degrees. That is why I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt today in the middle of the summer versus a sleeveless or a t-shirt. 
All I can do is dress accordingly. I can't argue. I mean, I can argue with it, but that's the way it is. When we went walking at quarter to six this morning on our hike, it was 51 degrees and on the Westchester, right? So all I could do was bundle up. All right. The weather reporter, when you're weather reporting in your life, goes like this. You swear you're reporting on the facts. Partly sunny, 73 degrees. Ashley, I have no time to go to the gym. You don't understand it. I have two children at home. They're young. I have no time. And Ashley, they will think I have no time is as real as 73 degrees and partly sunny. And there's nothing I can do about it. It's in stone. So a weather report is the justifications and excuses you tell yourself. Well, I'm really an introvert, so it's really hard for me to meet people. That would be a weather report. And then the chicken will have you be at a party, sitting on the sidelines, not talking to anyone. Or the brat will go into the party and go, oh, I don't like any of these people. They're not mine. Right? But the weather report is I'm shy and I'm an introvert and it's just the facts. Mm -hmm. Like if I was a doctor and cut you open, I would find introvert in there. No. So the chicken, brat, and weather reporter are not on your team. They are not God. That is not God talking to you. That is not even you talking to you. That is not you. They are not on your team. They are your board of directors. They are unfireable. They will live with you for the rest of your life and you need to know how to shut them up. So I'm going to give you a great story with one of my NFL players. So I coach NFL players and the one I'm allowed to talk about is Justin Pugh. Justin, when I got Justin, he was a rookie on the New York Giants and was about to get cut. I saved his ass and he will tell you that. And we got not only that, we got him a contract there. Hot damn. And then he got moved over to the Arizona Cardinals for $43 million. And he will tell you, thank God I coached him. Okay, now watch. He texted me <laughs> and he said, Beth, I thought of you today. I had to speak at the state Senate of Arizona. And he sends me the little clip of him talking at the state Senate of Arizona. And he says, Beth, my chicken didn't want me to do it, but I told him to fuck off. <laughs> so you have to be able, like Ashley started this with self-awareness and the courage. Yeah. You have to be willing to hear, oh, that's my chicken that's trying to mm -hmm. avoid this. Oh, that's my brat wanting to eat the cake. Oh, there's my excuses once again to not have to be accountable. And once you recognize the chicken and the brat and the weather reporter, you really can shut them down. I will tell you one other story. I was coaching someone who's an elite athlete. I'm not going to say her name, um, Winter Olympics. And the Olympic Committee hired me to make sure she got into the Olympics. They gave me six sessions to get her into the Olympics. She didn't make it the first round four years before. And this was her last shot. She was 24 years old. And I went to town on it. And I taught her, because her voices, that's what you're dealing with, would not shut up about her skates, about her this, about her triple A, would not. And I just kept teaching her, I'm going to curse Ashley, to tell it to shut the f up. Okay, when you go, she made it into the Olympics and won a medal. But when you go to see her do at the nationals to get into the Olympics, the one that she got in, the thing spans, comes right into her face right before she starts. There she is. And the music starts. And you watch her. I'm the only one who saw it. Say, no right way. The <laughs> and when they asked her, the media asked her, like, what <laughs> did you say right before? She said, oh, it was a Japanese prayer. Oh, and my God, that's amazing. Olympics, and she landed the triple axel. Wow. So you have to know it's not you. Yeah. Not you. And then I can give you, I'll let you riff for a little, but then I'll give you how do you get out of hell. So you, you go now. And then I'll add how do you fix it. Yeah. What I love, what I love, love, love about this is it adds um, a new, these labels and like identify ways to identify the inner dialogue, the voices gives you this whole new layer of awareness. It just makes it that much easier for you to catch it in the moment. And that is what I love because these are sneaky. Like I was just thinking up some, you know, right. Especially, yes. you know, I would say the brat, I would say, well, they're all sneaky. Weather reporter is yeah. probably the sneakiest because yeah. the weather reporter it's, Oh my God. When you were saying that, I'm like, 
we, there's so many lies, like lies, yeah. lies, lies, lies that we actually take as fact. Like we're like, oh yeah. no, 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 fact. Like this is a yeah. fact about me. This is a fact about the world. This is a fact about life. And we actually, we, we continue on and we act that out. And it's actually, yeah. when we actually ask ourselves, well, okay, that thing I'm believing is fact. Is that really what I want? Do I want to have no time? Yeah. <laughs> like, do yeah. I really want that? You know, yeah. it's like, yeah. So that one I would say is definitely the the most, like you said, subtle. Yes. Just as deadly, super yes. subtle. Right. And I love it because as you said, it's like a weather report. I love these. I love that. So I got chicken. So I'm going to reiterate this for you guys. I yeah. hope you're taking notes. Three voices. Number one, the chicken, AKA the avoider. We got the brat, AKA the defiant. I also would say that I call this one in myself, the diva. Yeah. <laughs> I totally, I literally, I call, I, this is one that I recognized in myself that I call out and I'm like, she is the diva. Like, diva. She's the diva. Totally. Yes, totally. That. totally. <laughs> and then the weather reporter. Yeah. So good. Um, yeah. so yeah, I love it. So now that when, when we recognize these voices coming yeah. up, that totally yeah. sabotage our personal yeah. accountability, that yeah. sabotage our personal integrity, what are the next steps to overcome and move through these? Perfect. This Great dialogue? question. So the first thing I would have everyone do who's listening is I'm going to give you an assignment before I give you how you get out of hell, right? Mm. How do you get out of the chicken brat weather quarter? So the assignment I would give you is at the end of every day in your PDA, whatever you use, what I would put in there as a reoccurring event is where was I a chicken today? Mm. If you want to, so whichever one you want to go after first. So where was I a brat today? You don't even have to ask where was I a weather reporter because the chicken or brat will cover it because the weather reporter will give you the excuse to why you're being a chicken. The weather reporter hmm. will give you the excuse because I'm so stressed. That's why I get to eat a piece of cake. So the only two you have to ask at the end of every day is where was I a chicken today? And notice the question is where was the question isn't like, as Ashley said, because we all lie to ourselves. I would not have you ask the question, was I a chicken today? Because what are you going to say? No, I wasn't. But if you go, where was I a chicken today? You're going to go on the hunt for her or him. So mm. where was I a chicken today? Ooh, I was definitely a chicken when he asked me this question. And I didn't tell him the truth that I really didn't want to go. Okay, I was a chicken there. Where was I a brat today? I ate the fried food, the ice cream and the pot, you know, and the cookie. Yeah, I was a brat. That's now, I'm going to now give you, so now you recognize it, but now I'm going to give you how you get out of it, which is the next thing you need. But know that you can't do this next thing till you know where you're a chicken and brat. Now, why do we care about being a chicken and brat? I'm going to give you the bigger picture. Because it messes with your dream. The only reason why we have any of these conversations is because you have a dream. Whether it's a dream in your career, whether it's a dream for your love life, a dream for your children or your future children, you have dreams, not New Year's resolutions and not goals, dreams. And so if you have this huge dream, you better know where you'll be in a chicken brat weather reporter because you're going to get in the way. I was just coaching a very well-known actor and we were speaking and I did, okay, where's your integrity out against your higher self? right against your icon. And so we listed the four places that are integrity. She's not honoring something inside of being her dream. And we got, okay, now I'm going to give you what to do about it. Okay. You need three things. You need a specific measurable promise. You need a consequence and you must have someone to hold you to account, mm -hmm. but it can't be a person like my ex-boyfriend if I didn't keep a promise, he would go like this. Oh, honey, it's not a big deal. Because he loved me so much, he wanted to give me anything. But i that's not who I need to hold me to account. So I always use one of my sisters, right? Because if I don't keep a promise, they're making me pay the consequence. No shit. Like, they're not. <laughs> like, get out of here. Shut up, right? So you have to pick someone who's not going to do double or nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of our friends let us get away with shit. So uh -uh, don't pick them. Pick someone who is committed to your dream and is going to hold you to account. No kidding. Mm -hmm. All right. Specific measurable promise is simple. You can't just say you're going to the gym. That's not specific and measurable because the brat will literally find a loophole. 
You'll drive up to the gym. You'll go. You'll go in. You'll buy a green juice. You'll wave to the people in the spin class and you'll leave and go, I went to the gym. <laughs> no kidding. We are that bad. I had an NFL player, another one who had a consequence because he's a wine connoisseur of no wine. Doesn't get any of his wine. He gets on the phone with me giggling. Bing. Giggling. I'm like, what are you giggling about? I didn't keep my promise. All right. Well, you didn't have any wine. And he's still giggling. I'm like, what the fuck did you do? He goes, well, you didn't tell me I couldn't have vodka. <laughs> oh, my like, God. That's, a dumb, that's the brat. <laughs> exactly. Right? So you need a specific measurable promise. That's easy. Everyone understands that. I'm going to go. I'm going to lift weights for 30 minutes. I'm going to get on the um, treadmill and get my you know, sweat and do 40 minute run, whatever it is, specific mm -hmm. person to hold you to account. Someone who's going to be like a no shit cares about your dreams sometimes more than you do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's discuss the consequence. This is the, this is where it all works. You have to pick something that if you don't keep the promise would annoy the crap out of you, annoy the crap and you have to pay it. So where we coach people, I'm going to give you ideas. Your best bet is to do a vice. So I'm going to now tell on myself, everybody, maybe you won't like me after this. Who the, I don't care. But here we go. Right. So one of my vices is at the end of the day, I'm not from the drinkers. I could give two shits about drinking. Right. I like my weed pen. I like my little weed pen. It makes <laughs> me so happy at the end of the day. Right. So all we ever have to do with me is take that away. And I will keep any promise to not lose my weed pen. Mm. And I have lost my weed pen because I didn't keep some promises. But that was the best one. So a consequence is, I'll give you another one. Um, money out your car window is a good one. So for every promise you break, you take a $20 bill, you crumple it up, and you throw it out your car window. You I think that's what Julie does. I think yes, Julie does that. Throw money yeah. out the window or she doesn't get her, you know, her matcha coffee or whatever that thing. It like yeah. there's certain you have to pick what would annoy you. So watch. You're about to go eat that piece of cake is the brat. The brat go eat it, eat it, eat it. And you have a promise. No desserts till Saturday night. And it's Thursday. Mm -hmm. And the brat's going eat it, eat it, eat it. And you go, Ooh, I got it for every bite. I take of it, I owe $20. This looks like about six bites. So that would be about $120. Yeah, no, not doing it. So you must find what will annoy the crap out of you. One of my sisters has that she loses her favorite uh, episode of her next show and never gets to see that episode. Mm, that's a good Ember, one. That's right? a good one. If you, were, if you are in a couple and... Your, your partner is the dog walker because you don't want to ever get up that early to walk the dog. Yeah, you're walking the dog for the next three days per bite you took. So you have to come up with, you're the judge, you're the criminal, so to speak. You're the one inventing. What's the yeah. consequence that's going to manipulate the chicken brat weather reporter to not run my life, but have me run my life? Mm -hmm. Well, I love that. I like that you're the one that's choosing the consequence and it's not the accountability uh, partner who's choosing it. No. Uh, that I really like that a lot yeah. because I've yeah. heard it. I've heard it. I've heard like a consequence thing, but where it's like the other person, it's kind of like a weird power thing. Like it's almost no, like, it feels no, con like no, you're being yeah. controlled. You know what I'm no, saying? Yeah. You, that is not yeah. how to, you can ask them what they think. So for instance, back when I was with Steve, um, that love, um, one of my bad traits, cause I'm a bitch is when we would be in the middle of the fight, I would pull this fine, leave, get out, don't come back. And that's just, and mm -hmm. I remember in the last time it was during the quarantine and I watched his face get, I, for the first time saw his deep hurt. And after we resolved the fight, I sat there with him and I'm like, Steve, tell me what it's like when I do that thing called get out. And he got teary eyed. And he said, it's the worst thing ever. It breaks my heart. It's not true. And someday I'm just going to walk out. And in that moment, I really got, wow, Beth, you are such a bitch. And I said to him, I said, okay, here's the deal. I will never do that again. Here's my promise and consequence. Never again. If I ever do it, I lose 30 days of no weed. 
And he was like, whoa, because he knows how much I love my weed. He says, deal, done. And that was the end of it. That's not why we broke up for like that. Mm -hmm. But that was the end of my ever doing that again, because I would have to pay because my accountability buddy is my sister. She would make me pay. He wouldn't make me pay. She would. 30 days of no weed. And that would piss me off. Yeah. So it works. I like, I like that it's, you're basically taking away something that you really, really like I, for me, I was thinking, Hmm, what would be a good, uh, like my, my thing that would be so annoying. Well, I'm a huge coffee drinker and I cherish my coffee in the mornings. Like it's like a thing, like it's a whole ritual I have (laughs) with my coffee. And so like, that would be a super irritating. Yeah. And then I also, um, and also that chocolate can. That would be it that mm-hmm. your coffee, because of how much yeah, you love coffee. it, right? Mm-hmm. If you break the promise, you don't get the next morning. You don't get the next day's coffee at all. Like yeah. a shot of friggin' espresso. So you don't get a headache and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah. so good. And right? I also like stop you in your tracks. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And I also love the one that you, or you said something, you said it really quickly and then you kind of, you kind of went into it, but I want to just highlight and underline it. For, for those who have like the food thing, right? If you have like a health goal, it's not about like, cause I, how many times are you like, oh, well I had a bite. I might as well just eat the whole thing now that I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, well, I might as well just eat the whole pizza, you know? I eat the whole box of cookies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already, well, I already screwed up. Might as well. So I like that you said for every bite. So I just kind of exactly. wanted to outline that because that that's important. Like no, because bite. you will eat the whole friggin' box of cookies <laughs> in the place. Yeah. So yeah. every bite, or for the people who want, who are bratty about their drinking, every sip you take over your second glass, you just lost your weekend's whatever, right? Mm-hmm. You And every be very clear, everyone who's listening, your brat will find loopholes. That's how much the chicken brat weather reporter wants yeah. to win and take over your life. And you have to get, they are not on your team. They want you to fail. They want you to stay small. They do not want you to have their dreams. I'm sorry. Whoever invented humans invented this part of us so that we could be in that war. So our higher selves win. So that's the war you're in on a daily basis because she doesn't shut up. Mine does not shut up. She talks to me. And what I, what I really like, and I actually talk about this in a, in a different way. I've talked about learning to dance with your shadow. Yeah. Um, so, cause we all yeah. have a shadow as we talked about, you, you talked about earlier, we all have light and dark, we all have that contrast. And so getting to know your shadow. And I love that this is actually a way for you to get to know your shadow is by identifying the chicken, the brat, the weather reporter, we're actually allowing ourselves to get to know that part of us so that we're, it no longer gets us, you know, pulls the rug out from under us. It doesn't catch us by surprise anymore because we're prepared for it. We know that part of us, we're connected to it because we know it. And we actually, when it shows up, we're like, oh, wait, I know you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> that familiar voice, yes, the brat. Exactly. Okay. And, and, and it gives us power. Said. It gives us power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love what you said. It's really making friends with your shadow side. Yeah. Really making yeah. friends. Like, what am I really going to hate my bitch? That would be more bitchy of me. Like, yes. Let me just be now mean to my stuff that I don't like about me. It's kind of like you have a right arm, you have a left arm, you there's the ceiling, there's the floor, I'm a bitch, what you got, right? Mm-hmm. And we can't, so it really is making friends. Sure, would yeah. I rather have your shadow than my shadow? Of course, you think I want to be 62 and still single? No, right? But it's my shadow. Yes. And yes. I got to not be mad at it. And I got to yeah, accept hate it, her. see it, exactly. accept it. And then now I you can work it. with it. Exactly. Right. And to know it last night, I was on a call with a guy from Tinder and we were laughing hysterically because he gave me his whole story of all his relationships in his 55 years. And I was like, at the end of that part of it before I went, I'm like, oh my God, I like you. You suck at relationships as much as I do. Right? Like, yay, we can figure this out together. Oh my God, I love you. I love that you said that. You're the best. (laughs) I'm like, what am I going to do? I suck, right? And to be able to be friends with it and laugh. Yes. And then be at war. I'm not sitting around like joking about it. I'm at war on her, right? But I'm at least friends with her to know that I got to figure out my lesson. Yeah, totally. Totally. No, it's it's so good. It's like that those all three are forms of resistance and what we resist persists. So if we, it's not, it's not going to help us to resist the resistance. (laughs) It's just like piling darkness on darkness. I love it. Yeah. So true.
so okay, good. so I want I want to do like a recap because there's so much that you said okay, that good. I wrote down. Good. Um, uh, really important questions. Two really important questions that okay. I heard you say that I really want to make sure that you guys wrote down is where is your integrity out? Okay, asking yourself that question. Where is my integrity out? And uh, going back to kind of the beginning of the episode, how you can identify where your integrity out is integrity is out is by listing your core values. Um, because that's right. If you're out of integrity with any, with any of those values you were talking about in the beginning, would that be a way that they can kind of identify and see, okay, oh, um, an like you said, I'm way, an easier mom. way to do it because they'll get stuck in, well, what is my value? So I don't want to okay. get anyone because they'll use that as their reason. Like, I don't even know my mm, values. Okay. So what you do is the questions you can ask is, although again, it's going to take courage, is where am I hiding? What am I tolerating? Mm. And what am I lying about? Any mm. one of those questions, like, what are you tolerating? I'm tolerating I'm 20 pounds overweight and don't look as hot as I used to. I'm tolerating that my, you know, that my daughter keeps doing this and I haven't said anything. What am I hiding? I'm hiding that I'm not so happy with my sex life and I haven't said anything to him or her. Right. So there's, and that's where you'll then see. Got it where you're not living true. Like, so if you go that it's easier because I don't want people stuck in what are their values. values. Okay, like, great. Right. Yep. Okay. But I love that. What, what am, where am I hiding? What am I tolerating? What am I lying about? Yeah. The second question that I heard you as well is uh, you get to recognize step one was recognizing where you're a chicken, where you're a brat and where you're re weather reporter. So yeah. where was I a chicken? Where was I a brat? Where were those? So I love yeah. that because then we can recognize. And it's like, cause in, this is a really great practice to get you guys started because yeah. in the beginning, it may be hard for you to identify in the moment. So yeah. I like what you said about going back and saying, okay, where today was I? Exactly. I love that. Cause exactly. then you're like, oh, and you start yeah. to get acquainted with that part of you. Your so that you oh, yes. that was my chicken. Oh, okay. now that I know what my chicken my sounds exactly. like. Yeah, exactly. getting acquainted, exactly. getting to know these parts meet. of you, right? Like I had to meet like my one of my voices is the one that tells me I'm stupid, right? Like, oh, you're such an idiot. I was ADHD when I was a kid. And like, so she wants to remind me of how stupid I am. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. you got to yeah. be able to go, okay, that is so not me talking. All right, yes. good. keep going. You're doing great. Great. Okay. And then from there, you get to create a promise for yourself. This is where the accountability comes in. So making a promise that's specific and measurable. So underlining specific and measurable guys, very, very important. And then creating a consequence. If that promise is not upheld, the consequence being something that maybe is a vice, something very annoying, something that you love that you maybe take away. Like I gave you the coffee example. And then finally, having wait, 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 someone. Let me okay. One thing. Let me, so I can give this to do you. Do it, listeners. sister. Do it. Okay. If you break the promise and pay the consequence two times, that means the consequence isn't great enough. So on the mm. second time of paying, you have to then go, okay, I better up the ante on the consequence. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. Right. right? So if I, if I, if I didn't keep my promise, First time, it usually will just take one time because it'll so annoy you, but then it puts you right in integrity. If you do it again, consequence ain't great enough to stop it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. I love that. Thank you for, yep. for uh, that's, that's really, really important because yeah, I could see yep. that maybe the first time around, you know, we pick something and it's not as effective. Cool. Pick something right. else. That's, yeah. that's going to work. Okay. And then three, having someone to hold you account to account gets to be someone that really, really, you know, ain't going to let you get away with shit. <laughs> exactly. Bottom so line. If, so uh -huh. like, yeah. like I know, for example, if I were to have my mom hold me to account, it wouldn't work. She's, she's my mom. I love you. Ma I love you, mom. But she has always been, she's yeah. got that big compassion bone. So like, she'll yeah. just, it's okay. Can, yeah. Push over. No, you don't, you can't have a pushover. You can't have a pushover for your accountability, buddy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. You need someone who will go. When I owed a thousand dollars once, my sister put her hand out and go, give me the friggin' a thousand dollars. And I cried. <laughs> that didn't work. I'd give her a thousand dollars. Yep. Love it. Yep. So good. Oh, this is like next level accountability right here, guys. I hope exactly. you know. Exactly. Yes. This is, this is truly. And then for those of you, listen, who want to take so a free quiz so you can see which areas of your life that need the most attention, 
go into um, um, Handel's bio and in there you'll see the current reality quiz. It's free. So every one of your listeners can go in for free, take the current reality quiz and it gives you, right? Um, to like start like, ooh, I might need a dream here. Ooh, I think I need something here. So it's mm. this great quiz that wakes you up to wh- where you need to focus. So we'll make sure to put that in the show notes for you guys. Good. Just so it's like nice and easy for you. Yeah. And then, perfect. and then, and then anything else. Cause that, by, that was gold, by the way, I just want to say, oh, there's one really, really like crazy thing that I just want to uh-huh. underline right now for you and everyone. Yep. You're 62. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, when you said like, I, I heard you like say it like really quickly for like a while back. And then you said it again. I'm like, wait a minute. Cause when you said, Oh, that thing happened when you were 45 and I'm like, girl, that's what you look like right now. <laughs> so did that happen like this year? And then you just had this awakening this year. And <laughs> no, 62. yeah, if you see my I, mother, God, oh bless my, my God. Mother. my mother is 85, still wears leather pants, still is as hot as goddamn hell. My grandmother hell yeah. died at 101 what looked as she started go down in about 86. My mother won't ever have that. So we are so fortunate and thank you. And yes, I care. And I, you know, it, it's really integrity, right? And really, mm-hmm. you know, water and lots of different things. Yeah. Yeah, totally. No, absolutely. I just, I had yeah. to, I just had to say that because I was like, wait a minute, I can't <laughs> let that slide. I just got to make sure to, make sure we shower you with some, with a compliment right Aww. now. That's so true. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so if there's anything else that you want to, anything that we missed that we want to add, I feel like we like really, really no, covered we that so everyone. well. We did beautiful. Um, check us out. I'm Beth Handel of the Handel Group. So you'll find me Beth Handel Weisenberger. I'm getting rid of the last name. Oh my God. The process to change your name is a pain in the ass. But I am going back to my maiden name, Beth Handel of the Handel Group. Oh, Um, yeah. Go follow me on Instagram. Follow Handel. We drop content all the time free. And then for sure, Miss Ashley, we should keep doing this and giving this away to your people. Oh, yeah. I love it. And definitely I'll put all those, all the things that you just listed for them to just continue to be in your presence because you're amazing. And um, I do have one final question that I ask all my females on fire that I like to end (laughs) with. Good. (laughs) And that question is, Beth, what is one thing about you personally that you used to maybe dim, that you used to mute or hide, or maybe even shame about yourself Mm -hmm. that you have since reignited and reactivated on your journey to becoming this female on fire that you are today? That's a really great question for sure. So I became someone who loves being in front of thousands upon thousands of people, right? On stage, workshops, you know, the more the merrier. When they go, will you leave for 100 people? I'm like, can we have 500? So that was not always me, right? So I would sit when I was 19 and 20 in workshops and never raise my hand, Mm -hmm. never talk never thought I could contribute, never should I get up and bother these people. So I really had a head trip about um, speaking in front of people publicly, right? Wow. Um, And here I am a public figure who loves it, who for sure, one of my dreams, I'm so not done, is, you know, the Barbara Walter of coaching, I want my, you know, own TV show, let's get the handle method out. So that is not anything that I would have done in my 20s or would have said, I would have laughed at you. Wow. Oh my gosh. I hope that inspires so many listeners right now. Any one of you whose weather reporter says that you are not a good speaker and you take that as a fact when it's a BS lie, because look, Beth used to say that about herself and look at her. I mean, you guys, I hope you've experienced, I mean, in this episode, I'm you, I know you've experienced her, but I'm telling you, like I've seen Beth and she is like, you're so magnetic and you're so Aww. great at just like, you're just such a great speaker and such a powerful speaker. You've got the, you know, you've got all the inflections you do and you've got the fun, <laughs> like spunkiness about you. So, you know, that's the thing is like just catching these little lies that you tell about yourself yeah. because like, look, I have a very similar one as you, by the way, that's actually I, what you said. I hundred percent resonate with. And so if Beth and I can do it, so can you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> And we'll leave it at that. (laughs) Awesome. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on. We all love you. You're amazing. And I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I know you did. Go follow Beth. Check out the links that we put in the show notes. And I'll see you on the next episode.